I'm Ty Jones, Product Manager for Manitowoc Ice, and this is NEO, the everywhere you need ice machine. NEO means new, a new level of performance, intelligence, and convenience. We're here today in the Manitowoc Ice Service Training Center to talk about the convenience features that come along with your NEO ice machine. More importantly, to demonstrate how easy it is to clean and maintain NEO. So to get started, first open the bin door. Make sure that there is no ice on the evaporator. So either wait for the freeze cycle to complete, then push the button to turn off the machine, or power the machine down and let the ice on the evaporator melt before moving on to step number two. Okay, step two of the cleaning process is to remove the ice from the bin. Unless, of course, this is just a preventative maintenance cleaning. If it's preventative maintenance cleaning, you can leave the ice in. Remember, Manitowoc, Manitowoc Cleaner is a food grade cleaner. It's citrus based. So if a little bit spills on the ice, it's not going to hurt anybody. But because we're talking about the semi annual cleaning, we're going to go ahead and remove the ice. Go ahead and use the scoop that's inside the bin. Take another receptacle or, or a bin of some sort to put the ice in. And remove all of the ice. Step number three is to initiate the cleaning cycle by pressing the active clean button on the Neo touchpad. You'll need to hold it down for about three seconds in order for it to activate. Once the light is on, you know you're in the cleaning cycle. It'll take a moment for the water trough to fill. Once full and the water begins to cascade down the evaporator, add the appropriate amount of Manitowoc cleaner. Be sure to refer to your use and care guide for the appropriate amount of Manitowoc cleaner. And make sure you always wear gloves when handling cleaner and sanitizer. The active clean process will take about 22 minutes. Once completed, power down the machine again and move on to step number four. Once the active clean cycle is completed, which will take about 22 minutes, you'll need to remove some of the components from the food zone. First, we'll remove the water distribution tube by removing a screw that's up on the right and another that's up on the left. These thumb screws remove without the use of tools. Next, we'll remove the damper, also held in by a single thumb screw. Then the trough. One thumb screw on the bottom, and another thumb screw on the right hand side, right behind the floats. Go ahead and remove the floats so they're not in your way. Finally, remove the two floats by pulling out the grommets, pulling the leads through, and disconnecting the power leads. Now we can take these parts over to a wash bin for cleaning. Now it's time to clean the food zone components. I've already mixed cleaner with water 
it's a one gallon of water to 16 ounces of cleaner ratio. All I do is take the components, drop them down inside the water, and just let them soak. You can also take the floats and put them in the water. Just don't let the, uh, the leads get wet. I'm going to let those sit there and soak for a little while. As they soak, they will begin to foam. That foaming means the cleaner's working and it's getting rid of that lime scale and mineral deposit buildup that has, uh, that's found itself on the components. While the other food zone components are soaking, I'm going to take the time to wipe out the inside of the bin. I've made another solution of, of cleaner. It's the same ratio. And with a rag, I will simply wipe down all the surfaces inside the food zone. Get the sides, the bottom, around the evaporator pit as well. The one place that a lot of people don't think to get is up on the top. Keep in mind, in order to do this, you may have to lower the door just a little bit to get all the way to the front, and then actually come underneath in the door gap to get the other parts that I couldn't get while the door was open. Now I'm ready to put all the components back inside and we're almost done. Okay, now that I've let these soak for a little while, all the foaming stopped, simply pull them out of the water, wipe down each component thoroughly, and then thoroughly rinse with clean water. I'll do that to each one of these and then return them to the ice machine. Okay, all the food zone components have been cleaned. They've also been sanitized. After cleaning and rinsing them thoroughly, as I demonstrated over by the sink, I refilled that basin full of water, added sanitizer to it, and let them soak once again. The ratio on that sanitizer water mixture is two ounces of sanitizer to three gallons of water. I've also put that same mixture inside this spray bottle, which I will want to spray inside the food zone before we put all the parts and pieces back in. Once that's sprayed down, I'll then start putting the food zone components back into the food zone. Keep in mind that you may need to lubricate the O-rings with a food grade lubricant before putting the trough back in. So I'll go ahead and give that a try. And I'll start putting all of the components back into the food zone. Okay, great, we're almost done. The last step now that all the parts are back inside the food zone is to run a sanitizer through the water system. It's really pretty simple because we've already done it once. When we clean the water system, the process is really the same. I push the active clean button. Once the water begins to flow over the evaporator, I put the appropriate amount of Manitowoc sanitizer into the water trough. That amount can be found in your use and care manual. Once it has run that sanitation cycle, it will take about 22 minutes or so, you're ready to start making ice again. Simply push the power button to start making ice once it's completed. So that's it. It's pretty simple. Thanks for purchasing your Manitowoc ice machine.